Pride really is about Granger and making Granger great and wonderful. Um, and I wanted to start out with this. Why uh, uh, care about Lancer Pride stuff? <laughs> right? Because, like, let's be honest. Like, There's Lancer Pride thing. Can I get you guys from teachers? Yeah, okay. <laughs> right? Well, why should you care? Because it matters to the students. It really does. They really do care about the dumb stuff that we give them. I always joke that kids will prison shank their neighbor for a Tootsie Roll. You'd be amazed what a kid does when you hand them a pair of Granger socks. Because they've changed their attitude and they've improved over a two week time frame. And the next thing I know, that kid will go stab somebody in the eye for me if I ask him to. Right? would be like, that kid gave me a hard time. The kid's like, I got this. Right? And they're gone. Right? Because I gave them a pair of socks because they earned them. Because they improved on their attendance. Okay, you'd be amazed. We already had kids already hitting us up for uh, the Lancer Pride cards. How come my teachers don't have those yet, Mr. Bernal? Miss Allo told me to come see you. And I was like, thank you, Miss Allo. Um, they care about them, all right? And it matters to them that you're recognizing what they do. These cards are now in your boxes. I put them in there yesterday. I also recognize... What, you didn't get one? No, I want... No, can we use the old ones from last year? Yes, and if you can't, Dr. Dunn will figure it out. Yeah, go ahead. Um, he's like, I hate you. I'm presenting. So, uh, yes, you can use ones from last year as well. I also recognize that there are some teachers that will tell me, quite frankly, to go to hell. They're not going to give them out. Okay, if that's you, don't tell me that. Just put the cards back in my box. I will give them to the teachers who want them. Right? Like, I'm not going to come and kick your door down and get grumpy with you about whether or not you're handing them out. Okay? You should know that when you put your name on them, we track that, and there will be rewards for teachers who actually hand them out. Okay? Just so you know. And these really do matter for a kid when you're like, hey, I want to recognize you. You were thoughtful when you did. And I have teachers that say, Josh, it seems so weird when I'm handing the card to the kid, and I'm like, Hey, this is because you were thoughtful. You know what? It actually matters to that kid. They will respond to that. When you're like, hey, I noticed that you did this. I feel like you were connected, and I want to give you this card for that. And then the best part about it is they go down if they get the, because most of them are going get, to get a candy bar, right? And they go down, and when they see Debbie, bless Debbie, she's so wonderful. Debbie says, why did you get this? And then she says, oh, you should see how the kids are like, I got this because I did this. And she praises them up and down, and they're excited because they have something tangible there's something tangible for what they've done. Because a grade is not tangible. You can't eat it, you can't show it off, other than your parents are like, good job, move on, do it again. That card gives them something that they appreciate. And it really does make a difference. Question, comment? I'm going to say that juniors and seniors also really love to get them. I have um, taught SBO and LAT before, and when I give them cards, I never, ever, they never get to give it out to us. So please give them out the older ones, not just freshmen. Freshmen, they get it because we push it in freshmen academy. So please give them junior seniors. Yes. For the five minutes we get to read, can it just say on there specifically it's not to get out of class early, just to go to lunch? Yes. Early? The five minute early is to go to lunch five minutes early, not to leave any class five minutes early. Put that on the card. Okay, I will harass the people who make that. It's okay. on the new one. Yes, it should be corrected on the new one. Okay, establishing relationships with students really does matter. Really fast, what I want to tell you about Mary Lee Webb, she was my high school music teacher. Yes, question. What do they do on that five minute early? What do they do with the cards? They scratch it. You them. take it. But then, what if they're caught in the hall? And they yeah. say, oh, I, don't, I got out five minutes early. And that's the I got chance they have to. I <laughs> grab <laughs> 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 a sharpie. On the card, put well done and the date. And I give it back to them. Okay. It's been ticketed, it's been punched, and they... I'm going to be super honest that typically if a kid's coming down five minutes early to lunch, I don't know that the administration is going to really give them a super hard time in general, unless there's 80 million kids that are all of a sudden having a five-minute lunch card. I think we're probably going to be okay, just in general. Well, they still get to turn it in, right, at the front office? Yes, we, that, you can collect it and turn it in, but the problem is if you give it to them, they're going to try to use it in another teacher, so you collect it, you turn it in. Sound advice, just put your name on the card and just that way the card's been used. Mark it off. Mr. Sandrock has sound advice. Yeah. And then, turn it in. and then just turn it in. Mary Lee Webb was my high school choir director. 
every year she had a theme for class. And it was like, live with passion. And I would do anything for Marilee Webb. I would do anything for her. When she put out on Facebook that she had cancer, I went to her house and gave her a donation to help pay for her cancer treatment. And just the other day, she posted on Facebook about one of her students at Dixie State dying in a tragic car accident. She was creating a GoFundMe page for that student. And whenever I see Mary Lee Webb, even to this day, it is like almost 25 years later, she looks at me and she says, Josh, do I love you? And I would do anything for Mary Lee Webb, and she was my choir teacher. Like, people are like, oh, well, you loved choir. Yeah, I loved choir, but Mary Lee Webb was also the person who called me out when I did some stupid stuff in high school because I was a teenager. Ms. Knight, who was now Ms. Volk, I failed her math class. I failed her math class. I have a learning disability. I failed her math class. I was in her class often trying to get help. And she cried when she put my grade in. I'm standing next to her and she's crying and she's like, Josh, I'm, so, I'm not asking you to cry, okay? They're like, I earned my grade in her class, okay? Um, but she's crying and she says, Josh, I am so sorry I failed you. And I said, no. Miss Knight, I earned this. And she said, no, I failed you. And she cried and cried and cried. And I'd go to war for her because I knew she cared about me. I knew she cared. She helped me sign up for uh, night school. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice of her. It was really nice of her. I passed that class, so I graduated. Okay? But all of these things is that it's, they, I had a relationship with those teachers. They cared about me. I knew they cared about me. And I know you got kids that are kind of crud holes and they're not easy, right? But if they know you care about them, I promise you it makes a difference. Yes? I already have a boy, one of my classes is so obnoxious. He struggles with being appropriate in class. Um, and because within the last few weeks, I've seen him like a slight like, adjustment with him. Because, like, you know, I try to help him understand, okay, those are appropriate questions. We're not going to talk about that. He likes to be the class clown. But anytime he asks a good question, anytime he says something good, I praise him for it. And I let him know that's awesome. You're doing fantastic. And I've already seen my slight adjustments in him being better behaved in class. You know, I talked to his parent teacher conference. It's one of his friends was that came with her parent. I was like, hey, can I just ask you about your friend? Can you, like, how can I help him? And she's like, oh, well, he's like been this way since middle school. He's, she was like, he'd get in trouble all the time in all of his classes. Like, he would get sent to the office all the time. I was like, okay, that's good to know. But it was nice, like, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to avoid doing that, sending him off if I can avoid it, because I know, like, if I can get a good relationship with him, I feel like he's going to change. And I've already seen baby steps of that. Because I'm like, you can do this. He's, he's, I can see he's interested. Yeah, if the kids feel like you care about them, it's going to make a difference when we try to interact with them. Bill Gates said this, research shows that there's only half as much variation in student achievement between schools as there is among classrooms in the same school. If you want your child to get the best education possible, it is actually more important to get them assigned to a great teacher than a great school. The East Side schools can kiss my butt. I'm so tired of hearing us compared to the other schools. Granger is a damn fine school. Yes. And this is what makes the difference. It's the teachers. You are the heart of Granger. The kids will respond to you. That's why we do Lance of Pride. We don't do it because it sounds nice. We do it because they'll respond to you. And we need you to be this. We need you to be the teacher that Bill Gates is like, get your kid in that class. And you don't have to be exciting and fun. I know some of you are like, well, I can't be exciting like uh, like so-and-so is because I teach math. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about whether you're exciting. I watched Mr. Tilly. He's not exciting, okay? <laughs> but you can still make a relationship that makes the kid connected that will help them along the way. Be this teacher. Be this teacher. Okay, educator's handbook. I'm not going to go through how to use it. Because you all hate that and you don't pay attention anyway. But you need a CYA. You need to cover your accusations. Some of you were thinking inappropriately. Okay, 
This is part of the problem that the administration has. When you set a student down, all of a sudden they show up, student shows up in their office and they're like, hi, why are you here? And they're like, the teacher sent me down here. And they're like, why did the teacher send you? Because of my cell phone. And they pull up educator's handbook and there's nothing. And then they call you and they say, hey, what's up with this kid? You're like, this kid forever and a day and I hate them and I hope they die. Right? And then they say, okay, did you call home yet? And you say, why would I call home? And the administration says, I'm sending them back. And here's the deal. I know you all have kids who are who habitual cell phone, talk over you, all kinds of stuff. You don't have to document it every single day. You can go in at the end of the week and say, little Billy used his cell phone 97 times this week and put it in once as a minor offense, but you can say he did it all these days. And then you can make a phone call home. If the parents speak Spanish, you let me know we have aides that will help you. They can call home for you. Okay, and then a phone calls home. So when you send that kid to the administration, they can say, look, the teacher's called home. It's documented. So when I bring the parent in, if it continues to be a major problem, there's documentation because the district's going to come back and say, where's your documentation? GEA's going to say, why didn't you document it? And you can't just say, it's in my mind. Okay, it helps a lot. It also gives us the data we need to know where to make improvements. Parent contact is immensely important. When you contact the parent, you tell them what's going on with their kid, you'd be amazed what can change. Okay? And if you don't fill it out, the administration's really limited on what they can do. Do the admins a favor, fill out educator's handbook. If they're not responding to educator's handbook, then we can go back to them and say, you're not doing your job. Okay? The more data we collect, the more leverage we have to make school-wide changes. Hey, all the teachers are experiencing this, we can make that change. This is the Lancer Pride Behavior Flow Chart. This is what tells you how to give out um, a, a G card. I have some of these with me if you need one. Really fast, it's just really simple. Verbal direct, teacher student conference, parent contact. If at any of those points a kid starts to change, give them a G card for the change. It's really simple. And you'd be amazed at how that leads to a change in behavior. Okay, I've got two minutes left. So, this is the student, student incentive program. I know there's going to be flaws with it. It's brand new. I know it's not going to go smoothly. It's brand new. But we would rather try and kind of miss a little bit and then fix it as we go than do nothing. Starting second quarter, these will be the areas that students can be recognized for. On the back of their student ID card, there's a little thing that we will be filling in as a part of the Lancer Pride team. Kids who receive incentives based on certain things, based on like academic and citizenship, will be eligible for certain prizes and certain opportunities throughout the school year and throughout the quarter. Like they can get into the dance for free. They can get into this for free. They'll get a pair of socks. Uh, I just found a place that I can order pop sockets for, for like 98 cents. We can give those out. Like all kinds of stuff, right? But we hit every, we feel like with every group, we hit the high level achieving kids up here. But we also know that there are plenty of kids who maybe aren't super great academically, but they're here every day, right? That's where the citizenship comes in. Okay, so there are rewards, and some of them are going to be based on improvement. That will start third quarter and fourth quarter. Um, same thing with CPA with improvement CPA. We're going to have problems with this. It isn't going to go great, but we want you to know there are rewards for the kids that are going to happen based on them being successful in class. Being here and trying and improving. Okay? Are there any questions? Because I'm out of time. Awesome, thank you.
As the chocolate is going around, I'm not going to take your, too much of your time, but I do have to cover two things on that agenda real fast. Okay, so Michael's not here to do the presentation, so I'm going to cover this for him, but I thought that this was very timely information that you need to have for the beginning of the year. So um, the EL task force this year has put together this... Um, the WIDA scores, and they're being distributed to the school city. So we're actually going to give you some instructions for how to access that information. And also Michael will later on send it out to you guys, so you will have this in an email. So I'm just going to quickly go through and talk about how you would access this information at the beginning of the year so that you can learn your students' WIDA levels. So if we can go ahead and go on to the next slide. Okay. So now, when you're in School City, if you go to the launch pad in School City, you should be able to go ahead and actually pull a custom report. So under reports, custom reports, if you go through customs, you will go ahead and see this right here. Sorry, it's teeny teeny tiny. I can't edit it, but I will tell you how this works. So beginning of your data. Okay, so we have the beginning of your data report for this school year. This is where if you actually went over to the side over here, where the I is, you should be able to see which of your students in your class are in ESL class, and this will tell you their Lexile score, along with their WIDA score. So now you have that. Now one of the things about this beginning of your report that um, Mike wanted to stress is you may not see all your kids. Again, it depends on how, if they were there for the testing and all that, so the information kind of rolls in. One complete way to see them is the end of the year test, which is this one here, if you're looking for your kids. That will give you the score. Um, he will be sending you an email. Within that email, we've included a couple files in there. One's a WIDA descriptor, and one's a performance indicator. So as a teacher, if you, if you have kids that are all over the gamut when it comes to WIDA and their language ability, those two files that we included can help you give you an idea of what they can and cannot do in class and what we really expect out of them. And as instructional coaches, that, that's what we use when we work with teachers who want to differentiate in the classes. Okay, so that's that presentation. Um, you should be receiving something pretty soon. It's not by Okay, now this next one. You, as you came in, as you came in, you are given a large piece of paper. We won't have time to go through the activity, but I do want to put that in your hands so that you are aware of this information. Okay, this month, Granite School District's topic for um, working towards proficiency is authentic assignment. This is one of the ones that we actually felt as a committee that we needed to address. This is something as a school we haven't done which is how do we convert, and, and we're making some generalizations because we did give you guys a survey and we have these all over the place. Some of you are beyond this, some of you are, are not. But authentic assignment is the topic for this particular month. And if you are aware, we've been given the fourth Wednesday of every month, um, Dr. Dunn has granted that time, with a paid stipend for teachers to come and work on moving in, in this direction. So what we're hoping to do is that by the end of this little intro and that fourth Wednesday, you should be able to convert your assessments over to true proficiency-based assessments. And we recognize that some of you may not have had the time to sit down and figure that out, and this is what we're hoping this, this video will help. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, so I'm just going to go quickly to explain what it is. Um, I don't see a clock here, but I have a hard time myself. Okay, so um, when it comes to assessment, this is where um, the rubber meets the road when it comes to proficiency. And one of the things that you want to make sure that is that you are converting them, that you keep certain things in mind, because this is the way you're going to gather your data. When it comes to authentic assessment, it's just more than a paper test. It's your teaching, how it's received, what happens when they assess, uh, what adaptations you make, and then also reflection, what are some things that you may need to change. So 
this uh, professional development on the fourth Wednesday. We're going to talk about what it is and what it isn't. All assessments should be tied to your proficiency scale and also to your standards. So it looks like things got jumbled up on here. But what, one of the things that I do not want, that I'm not going to spend too much time on, but we know it's happening, is a lot of teachers are still grading on the old, old point system. And then they're taking the district conversion chart and giving it a number. And we know that right now with the deadlines that have been imposed, it kind of feels like this is all I have is what I'm going to do. And, but we need to get away from that. And we understand it's very real how fast this stuff is moving and what they're asking of you. So we're hoping to get away from that practice and actually um, administering assessments that are true representations of what the standard is and what we want our kids to do. So on um, the fourth Wednesday, we're going to go through an activity. Today we weren't going to do that. You have it in your hands. And it's a way to sort um, products. It could be anything from a question or a product-based assessment using your proficiency scale. And part of what you would have to do is determine what levels they are. Again, you have to use those skills. So um, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be practicing. We'll be practicing the product-based stuff. And then just questions, like the typical type of assessments we would normally see. I wanted to skip over to the slide. Um, everything with proficiency and assessment has everything to do with differentiation. As teachers right now, we're asked to differentiate our instruction, but a lot of what we're doing in our classrooms is still standardized. Like the kids are not being assessed at the same level as the standard requires. And we want to shift that. We want to see a variety of assessments, but we realize we're not necessarily all there. Um, interesting how they're all jumbled up in here with some everything. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about what we're going to do on that fourth Wednesday. We're going to skip this activity. I'm going to jump a few slides. <coughs> Okay, you might want to write this down. Um, for those of you that are interested in coming, a couple things. The PD will be the fourth Wednesday, it will be in the alumni room. We're going to use the alumni room as a collaborative space. We realize that, that you guys can be all over the place in what you want to do that day. And that's one of the things that we recognize as a the PBG committee when the survey was handed out that you guys wanted time to really just come and think. Um, so we're, as coaches, we're going to be in the alumni room working with teachers and we're going to go through some strategies with them if they so choose them to stay there. If you feel like you um, have it down and you want to go work at another location, you still would check in with us in the alumni room. And once we're done, you can park, go back to the classroom, but that's what we do. Um, the date will be October 23rd. I'm sorry it doesn't show up, but it's October 23rd. It's the day right before Snazzy, just so you know. Okay, this is this school's huge. We have anywhere from like what, um, one or sometimes we end up with enough PLCs that that um, we need to know how many of you are actually coming. So that QR code, if you can please, please, please sign up. Your phones. Um, right now, if you scan it, we'll allow you to sign up if you know you're gonna, you want to come to this. You can do it now. If you're not going to remember this information, it's okay. I will send it out. It also will contain the QR code. But I please, please, please ask that you um, sign up. Because we don't know necessarily.